Hi, welcome to Channel Stage One. My name's Amy and I'm here today in the costume shop at our production studio. So today the tutorial I'm going to show you is how to add a wire nose bridge to your mask to help it fit on your face better. So if you find that the mask that you were wearing to, to protect you and keep your germs in from everybody else doesn't fit you right, this tutorial will really help you out. So, I mean, a proper fitting mask is going to be kind of, it'll be snug under your chin, but not uncomfortable. And it will lay close to the skin on your, on your face. So here's a, here's a pretty common problem that a lot of masks have is they, um, they don't shape down around the curve of the nose and they don't lie flat along the cheekbones. That leaves this big old hole for you to share all your germs. So adding a wire nose bridge is gonna help us solve it. And briefly, what the project is gonna be is we'll cut a piece of wire, sew it to our pre-existing mask, and then cover it in a ribbon. Uh, here's a finished one that I did a while ago for me. You, can, you can't really see the end results too well because it's covered by the fabric, but this was a pretty simple process and it made my mask fit me a lot better. See how it kind of shapes to my face now? So yeah, let's get started and let's get to it. Okay, so to get started, on making our wire nose bridge, the first thing we need to do is get a measurement. The measurement we need to take is um, how much wire we need to go from our cheekbone over our nose to our other cheekbone. So where we're gonna start taking the measurement is probably just outside of the iris, which is like the colorful part of your eye. And I have a lot of measuring tapes, I mean, I work in a costume shop, but if you don't have these at hand, don't worry because you can use like a piece of string or a shoelace. Any, any like strip of fabric will work just fine. So what we're gonna do, lay down the fabric right under the eye, outside the iris, and then we'll hold it down, go over the nose. This is about the middle of the nose. Over to the other side and then right to the other iris. Great, so that is how much we need. So I'll hold onto that with my finger and mark it with a pencil so I can remember it. Okay, bam, that's our measurement. So now I'm going to take it over to my ruler, lay it down, and I need six inches, great. Okay, so for wire for this project, I'm going to be using pipe cleaners, which is great because they're pretty readily available at houses and um, they sew on pretty easily and they're very flexible, which is great. But one thing I have noticed is they've got these really sharp little ends and that can just be bad news for something you're wearing on your face. So what I like to do is curl the ends up and make little loops. The cool thing is, is that you can use um, different kinds of stuff like bread ties or floral wire, but I had some pipe cleaners on hand, so I thought they would, they would do the trick just fine. Now with the loops in mind, I'm going to add a little bit extra onto my measurement of, of um, pipe cleaner I'm gonna cut. So let's say like a quarter inch. So a quarter inch on each side is a half of an inch. So I want to cut my pipe cleaner to be six and a half inches. So I'm gonna use a pair of pliers and cut it at six and a half inches. Great, that one's done. Now I like to add two pipe cleaners because I feel like it makes a, a, a stronger bridge because over time, um, the wire can get kind of brittle and you know, it, it might need a little friend to help it along, so why not? Okay, so I've got my two wires cut. Now I'm going to just sort of twist them together. 
like that. Nothing too tight. I don't want to add too much strain on the wire. Right there. Mm, over there. And now, take my pliers. I'm going to eyeball this a little. Well, I, yeah. And then just curl it over, making sure that the pointy end is touching the main part of this wire. And then I go over to the other side and I do the same thing. All right. That's the wire. Cool. All right, so we can set this aside for the next step. Now to get ready for the next step, I have my mask and it has been, I'm working with the clean mask um, and I ironed it too to help to, to help it be easier to sew when it when things are flat they're a little a little easier to handle. So I want to find the middle of this mask so I'm gonna fold it in half. Right there that's the middle. So I am gonna go ahead and mark it. Great. Alright so now we are ready to start attaching our wire to our mask. So remember we marked the middle of the mask and we can find the middle of our pipe cleaner and we'll just lay those on top of each other. I want my wire to be right up against the edge of the mask. Like I want it to be as close as possible. That'll help it make a, a tighter fit. So this, this looks good to me. I'm going to grab my pencil wherever it is. Here it is. I have my pencil and I'm going to mark down the ends just in case anything goes awry. I'm going to do a couple little lines to make sure that the wire stays within this box when, when I'm sewing. So there's a couple ways to hold down um, this, this wire as you sew. You can use straight pins, which is what I usually use in the costume shop when I'm, when I'm working on a costume, but the wire's a little weirder than, than fabric, so I'm going to use some clothespins. So I'm going to take one clothespin here, and then another there. And that will help hold them in place as as I sew. Um, and the great thing about we already drew the lines, so if anything gets off kilter, we have those to check ourselves and make sure we're staying we are staying straight. Okay, so I'm going to thread a needle and begin to sew. So when I'm sewing, I usually I will usually double up my thread, and I like it to be about the length of my forearm. Like, double, I double it up, but it's about the length of my forearm. Any longer than that, and you're going to give yourself a headache with the thread tangling up. It's, it can be kind of more of a pain to have to keep re-threading needles, but it's better than picking out knots. All right. And I'm going to tie... A little knot. All right. So remember those loops that we made at the ends of our pipe cleaner? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our needle and thread, and then we're going to go from the other side of the fabric. So this is the side you don't see. And we're going to go up, pull through, push into the fabric, and then go back in through that loop. This helps keep everything secure. And the stitch I am using to keep this all in place is, um, I believe it's called a whip stitch, where you just push your uh, needle into the fabric and then pull it out. On the other side, it'll look like this. All right, so that looks, that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now that I've sewn all the way around my loop, I'm gonna flip my mask over. I'm gonna tie a little knot. Doop. Use my scissors. 
cut the thread. All right. So now I'm gonna go over to the next loop. All right, same thing from the other side, in and out. Okie dokie, cool. So that's done, I'm gonna tie another small little knot. Clip off this extra so it's a bit neater. All right, and now I'm going to go to the middle here. Let me check the, yep, there's the middle. And I'm just going to go in and out of the fabric. I did, yeah. All right, that feels pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna just tie another knot on the wrong side. I can take my clothespins off. So this isn't finished yet, but tack, uh, tacking, which, which refers to doing some small stitches in, in specific places, helps keep this from moving around too much when I'm sewing it. The clothespins helped, but they can be kind of a hassle to sew around. Um, so now let's keep, let's keep sewing. I'm going to, I've got a needle with a little bit more thread on it. So we're gonna use kind of a similar stitch, but just pay attention because it's a bit different. We're gonna start from the back, go up, and now we're gonna take our thread and move it over the pipe cleaner. So like that. And now I'm on the other side of the pipe cleaner, so I'm gonna take my needle, go through the fabric, out the other side, pull it, and now I'm going to go kind of close from the other side, back here, over, and like that. So now I'm gonna do it on the other side. So I take my thread, cross over, push it back through from the other side. See, it's still on this side of the, of the wire. Pull it over. And I do it again. Yeah, so here's what it looks like on the other side. See how it's looped? It goes um, vertical in the front, but horizontal on the sides, on the back side. I like to do that because I feel it uses less thread, and I think it makes a sturdier stitch. So I'm gonna continue that all the way down. All right, I made it to the end, cool. So I'm going to push my needle through to the other side. See, look at those stitches, nice. And I'm gonna tie I'm gonna do a double knot just to be safe. You never know. This thing will get a lot of wear and tear. All right, cool. So here's what it looks like after we sewed it. And that's the back. Now, I guess you could you could stop here if you want if you want to. If you really liked how this looked, more power to you. But I like to have my wire covered. I think it makes it just a little more secure. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of ribbon. Now you can use anything you'd like to to cover your mask. Like you can you can be a designer here and really make an interesting choice. I like I wanted to go with the red because I I like this little sewing motif and I wanted to stay within that picture. So I just got this um satiny ribbon and it, you may have used ribbon before and noticed that it'll fray. You can also use glue to finish your edges. That will help. Or if you don't want to do either of those, you can simply fold your cut edge over 
like that and that will keep all the all the threads inside contained and it will help your fabric not fray. All right, so I'm gonna lay this down and it looks like it's just a little bit longer than I need it to be. So I want it to go maybe just like about a thumb's length out from the edge. So I'm gonna clip off my extra. And let's get back to making the mask. All right, I want to have all my pipe, pipe cleaner covered. I want it to look centered, that's nice. Okay, I'm gonna use straight pins to hold this down. And I am pinning just under the wire. So see, that's it right there. There's my pin. And you may have noticed I've got some overlap. Yes, that is on purpose. That way I can fold my fabric over and cover the stitching on the other side. Now that looks like it's not quite covering it. So I'm going to scooch it up just a little bit more. Try again. Boop. All right, there's one side. All right, folding it over, other side. Yay, it works, cool. So yeah, I'm using, I'm using straight pins on this to hold it in place. You could probably use closed pins too to, to hold everything if you don't have straight pins on hand. But I, I prefer them when working with fabric. So now I'm just gonna keep on pinning and get everything where it needs to be so I can sew it in place. I'm gonna fix that one just a little bit. Boom. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna start at this end. So I'm gonna use more, more thread on the needle. And I want, I want to hide my knot so that it looks a little neater. So I'm going to, well, first I'm going to remove this pin. I'm going to go underneath this ribbon and just poke the needle through and pull it out again. See, now I can't see the knot. Let's tuck the threads in. Great. So I want to, I'm going to try to use very small neat little whip stitches like that just going in and out so uh, what I'm thinking about as I'm sewing this is that there's two layers of fabric so you see the the polka dot sewing fabric on the front and then the blue fabric on the back when I'm stitching on my ribbon I on the front, I only want to catch this, this, um, this polka dotty tomato fabric. So I'm just trying to feel with my needle and push it through. All right, almost there. I'm gonna flip over and go onto the other side. And more of the same, we just stitch all the way around, being, being careful, watching our stitches. Now, remember that sewing is hard and if it's your first time doing it, it is, it is okay if you mess up a lot. It's gonna happen, so be kind to yourself. Because you will, you'll get a lot better the more you do it. All right, cool. Now I'm going to just tie my final knot. One and uh, two, 
then I'll just sneak this through the fabric and cut it. All right, that's, that's it, that we're done.